For these tutorials, I'm going to focus on techniques and tips that can be applied to any brand or model of 3D pen. I'm currently releasing three tutorial videos all at once that cover different areas and skill levels. This video will be for the absolute beginner with the goal of getting you started on your 3D pen journey with a minimal amount of frustration. The other two videos will be on basic and advanced techniques, so check those out if you're interested. I'll put links to them at the end of the video and in the video description. So you'll see a lot of recommendations on the equipment you need to get started for 3D penning, but what you actually need is very simple. The bare bones of what I recommend to get started are a 3D pen, duh, filament, I definitely recommend using PLA filament over ABS filament. The reasons for this are ABS emits a strong odor when penning, and there are more health risks of inhaling those ABS fumes. PLA is largely made from cornstarch or sugarcane and is biodegradable. Having templates for tracing and penning over can make it way easier to get started. Many pens already come with some of these templates, so you can start with those, or you can take any image you find on the internet, scale it to the size you want, and use that to pen over. And that's it. That's really all you need, the bare minimum, that you need to get started. Two optional items that I will mention are wax paper and tape. If you're struggling with PLA sticking to what you're penning on, or your 3D pen doesn't have temperature control settings, you can also pen on wax paper taped over your template to prevent this. And note that I mean wax paper, not parchment paper, which doesn't work nearly as well. Of course, you can add lots of other equipment and tools to help take your 3D penning to the next level. And I talk about most of these in the other two videos. But the items that I just showed are all you really need to get started. I kept these three tutorials independent of type or brand of 3D pen. If you want to know the details of how your specific pen works, either read the directions, duh again, or search for videos using keywords of your pen brand and model number. So in keeping with that spirit, I'm going to very briefly describe how 3D pens work, because chances are you already know what I'm about to say. 3D pens take raw plastic, also called filament, and use a motor that pulls the filament through the 3D pen. When the filament hits the bottom of the pen, it gets heated up, so that it flows easily through a small opening at the bottom of the pen called the nozzle. There are typically three important buttons on a pen. One for moving the filament forward when you want to push out some plastic and do some penning. One for when you want to move the filament backwards or unload the pen. And finally, there's a speed control which allows you to set how fast, it, how fast the plastic will come out of your pen. The fast setting will allow you to easily make thick, chunky lines, while the slow setting will allow you to make thinner, more detailed oriented lines. Keep in mind that since the nozzle is hot, you can get burned by it or the molten plastic that is coming out the end. So be careful and use caution. To start drawing, treat it like it's a normal pen or pencil with the nozzle making contact with what you're drawing on. The big difference with a normal pen is that you can change the height of the nozzle with respect to the paper, and that can have a huge influence on the end result. Okay, let's now get into some actual tips that will help you with your 3D penning. My first tip for beginners is to think about speed control. This can be done in two ways. One, by adjusting the speed on the pen itself as I just showed, or two, by changing the speed at which you move your hand. Here I'm making the initial line with the speed set all the way up. And then I'm going to set the speed down halfway and try to make the same line while moving my hand at the same speed, which is kind of hard to do. You can see that this line is thinner because of the speed setting that we changed. Finally, I'm going to set the speed all the way back up again, but move my, move my hand much more quickly. And you can see that the line is a lot thinner. As you practice using your 3D pen, You'll develop a feel for what speeds get you a certain look and appearance. And practicing and experimenting is a big part of getting good with a 3D pen. The second tip is about anchoring. If you're having trouble getting your lines to stick to whatever you're penning on, try using more anchor points. What I mean by this is the following. When you start a line, pause as you extrude some plastic to allow a small anchor point to build up. Then go ahead and make your line. Once you reach the end, pause again to allow another anchor point to form. The anchor points help to keep the plastic stuck to whatever you're penning on. 
In addition, if you're trying to make a long line, you can pause at points along the way to make anchor points that will help hold it in place. The third tip is about cooling. Keep in mind that the plastic is still hot right after it comes out of the nozzle, and it can still move around quite a bit, as you see here. But as time passes, it becomes more and more rigid. So remember to give your lines and layers the time it needs to cool. Also keep in mind that as you add hot plastic on top of previously cooled plastic, it can start moving around again. Especially keep this in mind for thin or small parts. The fourth tip is to be mindful of the direction that you're penning in. As you can see from this test case, when I pen left, the nozzle itself can smear the filament that's being pushed out. If I'm mindful of this and lift the nozzle slightly off the paper when going left, the smear disappears. But as you lift the nozzle off the paper, your stability and control are reduced. Another way around this is to change the orientation of the paper. I can rotate the paper and avoid the smear. This also improves visibility into what you're penning, so don't be afraid to rotate. I'm going to end with a time lapse of me doing some 3D penning using some of the tips that I've just gone over. Sprinkled into this time lapse are going to be a few other things that I think you should watch out for. This weeping or oozing of your pen after extruding is normal. The amount of oozing depends on a few factors. Type of filament, and especially the temperature the pen is heating up to, can have a huge influence on this. This is why I especially recommend a pen that has temperature controls, like this one, where you can change and tune the temperature for each new filament that you use. When you're penning, the filament does not stop extruding immediately after you stop pressing the forward button. So it really helps to anticipate when you need to stop penning and release the forward button one to two seconds ahead of time. Finally, always unload your filament when you're done using your pen for the day. This will help prevent clogging or jamming of the pen during the next use. Well, I hope you found these tips useful and that they've successfully gotten you started with your 3D pen. As I mentioned earlier, I've also released basic and advanced tutorial videos, so check those out if you want to find more ways to improve your 3D penning. I'll also be releasing more of my own 3D pen creations, as well as additional tutorial videos, so please subscribe if you want to see those. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.